Hello! In this video we're going to be looking at conditional probability and independence and this is something a lot of people you know when they start doing these probability problems they get a little concerned. They say Anna this is totally different than everything else we've done in finite and honestly I think once you play around with it and you see a couple of these problems you're gonna come to realize that this is actually just the stuff you've already done it's kind of a different wrapping paper on it. So just like in section 3.1, probability measures, axioms, and properties, all of that was Venn diagram stuff with this probability stuff jammed into it. Conditional probability and independence is typically combinations, um, sometimes permutations, but typically combinations with probabilities jammed into them. So let's go ahead and look at a problem. This is from section 3.2, conditional probability and independence. Um, from the book Finite Mathematics by Daniel P. Mackey and Maynard Thompson. This is problem number 23. This is one of the recommended problems that one of the instructors has given us, and um, I think it's a good one. You know, I chose this one out of all the problems they gave us because this is something you will see on a test, something very similar to this. So let's go ahead and work through it. The first step is, of course, to read the problem. So let's look at that. There are four men and five women on a committee. A subcommittee of three people is selected at random. Find the probability that all are male, given that all are of the same sex. So what they want us to find out is what's the probability that they choose a subcommittee of all males, given that the only way they're going to choose subcommittees is if all these people are of the same sex. So what's the first step? Well, if you watch any of my videos, you know the very first thing I always do is I write down what I know. So we know that there are four men and five women. And we know, they don't explicitly tell us this, but we know that that means that there are nine people total on this committee. And that's, that's potentially going to come in handy later. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it might. And what else do we know? Well, we know that they're going to choose a subcommittee. I'm just going to call that sub of three people. So, okay. And, uh, well, let's go from there. What's the next step? Hmm. Well, I think what we need to do is probably set up some combinations. And let's talk about why I think that. So we know that they want to find um, a situation in which all different committees that they, ch that, that they would choose would be all of the same sex. And so that's kind of called, you know, finding your total number of options. That's what I consider it. Everybody's got a different name for it. And so the way I think of it is from a combination, because order doesn't matter, but we want to find out how many combinations there are from an order of from a combination of four men choose three and from a combination of five women choose three and so that is the total number of committees or subcommittees they could make where everybody is the same sex right and so that would be four and you should this this formula should be burned into your brain if it's not write it down on a card somewhere, but that's going to be 4 factorial over 4 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial, plus 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial, and now we're going to do some cleaning up, right? So this turns into 4 times 3 factorial over, and I'm just doing that to make it easier, um, 4 minus 3, that's 1 factorial. Well, that doesn't really matter much. Times 3 factorial. Ooh, I don't know if you saw that. We're going to go ahead and, and cancel out that 3 factorial. And uh, let's see. Now we're going to do 5 times 4 times 3 factorial over 5 minus 3. That's 2 factorial times 3 factorial. And again, I can do some canceling out here. So that goes away. That goes away. So let's see. What do we have? We have 4 plus, and let's see, 5 plus 4 over 2 factorial. Well, 2 factorial is just 2, so that turns into 5 times 2, or 4 plus 10, which equals 14. So there are a total number of 14 committees that they could choose where everybody on that committee is, committee is of the same sex. So that's just a little bit of base work we need. And so that's the bottom of our, our um, probability here. Typically, one of the first things you d need to do with probabilities is if you don't know what the total op chances are, you need to figure out the bottom bit. And so let's see, what is our top bit? 
Well, we need to know how many different ways, or what's the probability that all of the people on this committee are going to be men, given that it's either going to be all men or all women. And so that is combination 4, choose 3. And I was going to do the math, but you should realize that right we already did that right here. So that's this, and that's this, and that turns into 4. So our answer ends up being equals 4. And so our answer to this is 4 over 14. And when it's something that n that neat, typically they want you to clean it up, so that would be 2 over 7. There's a 2 out of 7 chance that the committee that they choose will be all men, given that they will choose committees where everyone is of the same sex. So let's zoom out and kind of talk about what we did here and why it worked, okay? So first of all, let's see, I like to do purple for this. We wrote down what we know, what they wanted, and uh, what they didn't tell us but what we know. So this this nine people, we didn't end up using it in this case, but there's a lot of times where you will. So anything you know or you can kind of glean, typically you want to write it down. And then we figured out, you know, what's the total number of options we've got here? What's the total number of different ways they could make subcommittees of three? given that they wanted everybody on that committee to be of the same sex. And so that was a combination of 4 choose 3 for men and a combination of 5 choose 3 for women. We did the math, we did the math, we did the math, we did the math. And that came up with 14 and that was the total number of options here. And so then we just needed to figure out the top bit, which we figured out, okay, what then if that's the total number of ways they could make subcommittees where everybody's of the same sex. What's the number of ways they could make a subcommittee where everybody is male? And so that is combination four of three, and we realized, you know, we kind of scrolled back up and we cheated and we were lazy, and sometimes this is okay. Lazy math is not bad math. So combination four choose three. Well, we already did that math here, so, you know, we just jumped down and we figured out that we'd already figured out it was four, and that went right here, and so our answer was... 4 over 14 or 2 over 7. And so, you know, I kind of went through the math there pretty fast, but hopefully you're seeing that this wasn't anything that you haven't done before. Um, this was a couple of different problems that you've done before, just kind of jammed together. In the past, you would have seen this problem in two or three steps. So first they would have asked, you know, part A, what's the total number of ways that you could have just you know, the same sex people on these committees, either male or female? And then they would say, okay, what's the chance that you could just have all men on the committee? And not chance, what are the numbers of ways that you could just have all men on the committee? And here they're just expecting you to do those parts on your own and then put them together in the whole. So if you take it step by step, bite by bite, bite I don't think you're going to find it that hard. Just do some practice.